Why do you? Why did you become who you were? Why did I become who I was? Yeah. Um. Why would I, you want to do this? You know. Um. I just loved hip hop growing up as a kid. I just, you know, it was like like it it just it spoke to me more than any other music I had ever heard before. You know, from early like Ice T to Fat Boys. Um, and then LL Cool J, uh, Run DMC, Beastie Boys, and it just like I don't know. It was like I, did, I didn't, I didn't. First, first I was a fan of the music, you know what I'm saying. Before I even thought about rapping, LL Cool J was the one who made me like first start writing rhymes, and I was like 12, 13 maybe, and it sucked. <laughs> you know, I wasn't good, but. Like I had to keep practicing and practicing and practicing. I, I gave it up for a little while. Then I started again back when I was like 15 and started being able to kind of put songs together. And then I just was like, I'm starting to, I was never really good at much else, you know? So I just, I don't know. Once I found out I was decent at something, I just kind of focused and just, you know, went for it. That's interesting because I remember I was I was in a juvenile detention center and we heard um the I'm not we heard rappers delight we said what the fuck is that yeah how could it because we heard it <laughs> in the streets in our neighborhood but we never thought it'd be on the radio yeah and it was on the radio and we were like what the hell was that and we were just all blown away to see yeah. that our music was being played on the radio yeah you know how about the fact that rappers delight was like a seven seven some odd minute song yeah and the radio played it they played it from top to bottom like it was so popular it was all off the hook mm -hmm. and then nucleus jam on it jam on it yep yeah yeah man doom, doom, doom. Yeah. that was like yeah i never really i never really like got into rock and roll or uh r&b or blues or anything like that i just like i you know i'd listen to songs on the radio or whatever my mom was listening to in the car but once hip hop came along, I just felt like, man, this is like, I don't know, I just was all in. Yeah, um, hip hop was a, oh, I, I just can't even imagine it. It, made, it gave you pride. Yeah. You know, like us being the, like, um, book, the prototype of hip hop. At the beginning of it, it gave us pride to know that our music, people talk the way we talk, with being on television, being on um, the radio and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it gave us a lot of pride back then. Yeah. And it's, it's also like, it's just such a, if you think about like how hip hop from the start of it. Well, I was there. Yeah, and then it just like. Police oh, out in the front of every hip hop club, you got the fucking, the whole New York police station out in front of the club. Yeah. It was just, it was just, and if you went to a hip hop club and you were marked, people would say, oh yes, even in your neighborhood, you know, hardcore bebop hip hop, and it's what the fuck you fucking with those niggas for, yeah. Mike? That's what they used to say, what you fucking with them for? Even people in the neighborhood, what you fucking with them niggas for? But those was our people. All the criminals, the thieves, we all listened to hip hop. The yeah. money makers and everything, the, the you know, the, the killers, the robbers, the, the, all the fucking street urchins, we all listened to that. That's what we listened to. And as soon as we listen to, we enjoy it, but we spot, but we, um, surveying everything we're looking at the people with the jewelry the coats the clothes and looking yeah. nice, and then we're getting ready to get them after the club is over yeah and that's just what hip-hop was about all the robbers and thieves were coming there they enjoy the music but after it was over we're going to rob yeah and that's what hip-hop was about yeah once breaking came out the movie breaking and then crush groove and beat street man it was like yeah it just put it put the whole it put the whole culture of hip hop on the map in a, in, a, in, a, in a place where you could see with the music. You know what I'm saying? You had the visual and you had, you, you, you know, graffiti. You must, like that's, you must say, this is my way out when you saw that. When you I didn't getting good, you must say, this is my way out. When I started, yeah, when I started being able to put songs together and I started like, uh, you know, figuring out like, well, I might be almost as good as that rapper. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna keep going. And then I start, you know, just, I learned so much. Like I, I studied. How old were you when that started? Hip hop, uh, the first time I heard anything, my uncle Ronnie, uh, 
brought over a tape of Breaking, the Breaking soundtrack, and it had Reckless on it from Ice T. Once upon a time, a DJ's task was just to play records. What more about. could you ask? I know, and I was. I know colors, colors. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Colors was hard. Uh, yeah, my my uncle Ronnie started liking rap before I did, and then he kind of introduced me to it. And right around that time, I think yeah, the movie had just come out, and I saw the movie, and I was like, yo, this is, I love it. Mm. And it just, I don't know, it just spoke to me in a way that no other music had spoke to me before. I understand that. How old were you when you first started putting it out there? Like started rapping or doing rap battles? Well, I had a weird trajectory. Like I, I was afraid, like I, I was afraid early on, like 15, 16 years old, I was afraid that to go into any clubs or anything like that to say my raps because I felt like I wasn't good enough yet. Mm. So I had to get to a certain spot. And then I was trying to like, I was just making songs. And uh, one day I got a call from my boy Proof and he was like, yo, you need to come up to the hip hop shop. And I was like, What's, what is the hip hop shop? And he's like, yo, just come to the hip hop shop, write something, come up here, and proof like, remember proof, Nani? He 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 uh he ran shit in Detroit. We we like me and him came up together, and we came up rapping together. But he would kind of go do his own thing, and then I I'd, I'd be working like at uh, factories and stuff like that. And proof was out there like on the grind, and he started making connections, and then he met Jay Dilla, uh, Slum yeah Slum Village. Um, and a lot of the early Detroit hip hop that was like exploding onto the scene, like Proof was such a part of that. And I got a chance to, when I went to the hip hop shop, I was like, what the fuck? He was like, yo, I'll clear everybody out. I'll have like 10 people, right? And you rap in front of them. And if they don't like you, you know, they're gonna tell you they don't like you. <laughs> if, they, if they do like you and they fuck with you, then it, you know. So I went there, I said the rap, I got some, people jumping around and shit. And I was like, okay, this might be it for me. And then that's when we start having battles at the hip hop shop. Mm. And we was having like a battle every, what, couple months or something. Yeah, every, every, yeah, two or three months. But every Saturday, I would make sure that I didn't have to work till four o'clock because I was going to the hip hop shop every Saturday. So every Saturday for me was, and this is early twenties, was, um, St. Andrews Hall on Friday night, um, Saturday, uh, Hip Hop Shop, Tuesday, Ebony Showcase, and oh, then... Anybody that knows Showcase, he's a fuck, I gotta battle him tonight, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, that's what happened. I started battling, and then in, in the Hip Hop Shop, the first battle that we had there, I won it. But what we was doing, Proof was taking names, and he was putting them in a hat. Like, you, if you want to sign up the battle you just put your name in the hat he picks a name picks another name so it'd be like bizarre versus b flat and then they'd go at it and it was you know and then me versus whoever i remember one time i battled conniver who was in my group d12 but we weren't a group yet i battled yeah vaughn and um and then i just started like i met a few people that got me out of just detroit and i started going to i went to like 97 scribble jam and I went all the way to the end and then I lost to this guy named juice who To this day is still a really good fucking rapper and I think that it's he's so good that it's okay that I lost to him You know what I'm saying, but well, uh, is he, is he still in Detroit rapping? No, this was uh, this was Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah, the scribble jam was in Cincinnati. That was 97 and then I from there I met Wendy day and she put me on her battle team uh, she had this battle team that was, it was a, an event in LA called the Rap Olympics. And um, she put me on that team. I went out to LA and then started, got in that battle at the Rap Olympics, went all the way to the end and lost again, mm -hmm. the last dude. And I was like super discouraged. I just got evicted from my house. Had to break in through the <laughs> through the back of the house. Shit, yeah. The dude that we was paying rent to, <laughs> He wasn't paying the rent with it. So 
one day we this is literally the the day before i go to the rap olympics that, that i and thank god for wendy day man because she played for my plane ticket but <laughs> that day we're like what the f i come home from work me and my boy and we're like what the fuck all our shit is on the lawn I, oh, I know that oh, very well. So, yeah, yeah so... Lawn, the the fiction, man, and they decorated your fucking lawn with your furniture. Yeah, you and people was outside. rummaging through you it and shit. You gotta wait outside for nobody to take your shit. Yeah, yep, so that happened, and then I had to break into the back because I had nowhere to stay, so I had to break into the house through the back window, which was my old window. Broke in, slept on the floor, got up the next day, went to the Rap Olympics, and, and by the first prize was $500. And I needed that $500, man, and I lost. And I was like, f I was fucking devastated. And then this kid, Dean Geislinger, walks up to me and he's like, he's like, yo, man, you got one of those CDs? And I was like, yeah. And I kind of just tossed it to him, right? And didn't think nothing of it. I didn't know that Dean worked with Jimmy Iovine. Mm -hmm. So he gave it to Jimmy, Jimmy gave it to Dre, and I'm back in Detroit now, fucked, right? <laughs> I have nothing, like nowhere to go. Um, and I get the call and I'm like, oh shit, you know, this is about to happen. Wow.